All right, welcome back. We are visiting the big board again, I see. So uh, you must want to know what's going on. And right now uh, we're wrapping up the first playthrough of uh, the battle for Lepel, or Lepel, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And uh, it's obviously this is from the Army Group Center module, Eastern Front series, Barbarossa. It's got about 15 different names, <laughs> but uh, cool little scenario. It, it, it helps tune you up to uh, learn how to work with combined arms and divisional integrity and stuff like that. It's only really two and a half turns long because turn eight starts with the Soviet turn where they have to execute uh, four man mandated attacks. And then it goes on with a uh, full turn, which will give the Germans their uh, activations, then the Soviets, and then we get into the July turn. And really it's all over at the July turn uh, at the end of the Axis function, unless of course, there's an opportunity for a counterattack by whatever remnants of armor and other bits and pieces that are around to uh, make a difference here. And let's see. So what happened? It, you know, I really tried to focus on targeting the different groups and seeing how they could be most effective with a big push on, uh, this is Vitebesk in here, uh, a big push on it so that we could, we've got this strong point that's being carried along by everything, uh, so that we could pick up the three VPs here. But the real, the real game here is capturing this town, which is called uh, Politisk. And it's very tricky to get at, uh, seven VPs. It's just a town, not a, not a city. Uh, or a major city, so it's you know, the defensive measures are not that uh, beneficial. But there is a river running along here with a bridge, uh, and it's just tricky to get to because there's units in front with fortified zones. And you got to. I, I decided to come at it from two angles. One this way. I brought all the reinforcements that are coming on turn nine here, straight up here, and then in and around this way with the units that had already started in and around Ula here. Uh, I think the last time I played this, I brought uh, whatever these, this formation is, the balance of 18th mechanized, and I think parts of uh, 20th, is that 20th? No, 12th. And I pushed them towards Vitebesk when really that's sort of the second hand option, right? You don't necessarily need to get Vitebesk if you can kill off enough units and pick up VPs for them. Or you get these, you get this city, this town, you get seven VPs. You start with one, so that's eight. Now I only need one more VP to get nine VPs, which is the minimum criteria. So really all I needed to do was either capture that hex of Itabesk or Orsha down here for one. And then you've also got two VPs for this hex. And what I decided to do was uh, push... 7th Panzer via Overrun, along with 20th Motorized in this way, bring the forces in here and come around. So we moved the recon elements in some parts of 7th. It uh, wasn't 7th, actually. It was uh, 20th Motorized. And brought them in and attacked from the northwest while simultaneously coming up the road here with uh, the balance of 7th Panzer. I think that's 7th. I can't read it from here. Yes, it is. And then... Zoom in just a little bit. Then I had, uh, where are they? I had, this guy was in here. So I had most of 17th. And we attacked into this area here. And I think that's one of the things I could have done differently for the Soviets was not have moved too much from where it was. Uh, but because of the losses that I took, I had to make some minor adjustments. And that left an exposed hex here where the Germans could make a one hex attack, right? They were, they managed to get, knock this hex out, then moved here, got, uh, got a J, then they only had to attack one hex instead of two, everywhere else had to attack two. That allowed them into here and then exploit movement. They, they got across the river and then up the south side into Vitebesk here, right? 
So that was a bit of a, a bit of a blow for the Soviets. I probably should have paid more attention to the infantry units where they were in this zone. Now down in Orsha, just no luck uh, for the Germans. No luck getting any penetration here. I, you know, this turn I didn't even bother to do the attack here, but yeah, arguably we could have done this attack here uh, with four, six, so 10, 12, 12 to, 12 to three, four to one attack. Uh, probably, actually four and five to one, six to one attack maybe. Yeah, I mean, we might've been able to get through there. I, I don't know. Uh, still only would've got adjacent and then would've had to try for the overrun. And here, the Soviets had an armored division in defense with the defense of three and a four and a one. So that's pretty tough, pretty tall order to take that hex out. So we really didn't even worry about doing anything down down here. Yeah, uh, that so that was uh, that was where things ended up turn ten, and of course when we look at uh, the Soviets' opportunities now in turn ten, they can attempt here to make a four eight ten maybe twelve factor attack here, but that's you know it's going to be like a one to one attack or something like that in a city with a with minuses i have air that i could use to uh, make that a painful attack there's no way over on the left flank over at uh, politusk here that they can do anything there to the soviets can do anything there uh, they were chased out of that town and so everything would come down to them trying to capture this 2vp hex now, I haven't even added up the VPs for units lost. I uh, probably got enough uh, enough points floating around here that I can pick up VPs and still get the win for the Germans anyway. So, all right. So I, I said I was going to play this twice. I may uh, I may do that. I may set it up and play it again. Uh, it is pretty much a beat down for the Soviets. So uh, it's really only die dice rolling and really bad choices that will prevent you, I think, from winning as the Germans. But I'm curious now to see if I can do something better uh, along this section here and prevent Vitebsk from falling, which would then uh, then mean uh, it might be a little bit of a closer battle. So we'll see. Uh, as I mentioned in my poll, I would play great campaigns of the American Civil War and most Fe A Most Fearful Sacrifice and this game twice and a handful of other games, and I have been doing that, and also uh, playing some new stuff as it came in. I, I had a, a little bit of a play with Trevor Bender's uh, game out of C3i, and I've also uh, played, just recently played Combat, which just arrived, and Lock and Load's new bit of Harvest. Uh, got the pre-release copy of that in and played a session of that. I think I posted some video about that already. Uh, so stay tuned. We've got lots of new stuff coming. Hopefully, uh, work has been a little quiet with bad weather at the moment. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll make the most of that time. So thanks for tuning in. EFS, a great little system. Uh, it's not as complicated as people think, <coughs> especially these smaller scenarios because you can, you can knock them out in an hour, hour and a half. Uh, there's no supply to worry about or any of that sort of stuff. You don't have to rail things around. Excuse me. So uh, it's all good. All right. Talk to you soon. All the best. Roll dice.